Did you know that agriculture is one of the few industries that can scale globally in the next decade to meaningfully reduce climate change? It's a hot summer day. I'm walking in a field with my uncle. Chop, chop, walk some more, chop. We're hoeing large weeds out of a 40-acre soybean field by hand. It's hard work. But as a boy, I'm happy as a clam. You see, I grew up on a farm, and I fell in love with the land, plants, and growing things. Hard work it was just a part of life. During those long days, we would talk about all kinds of things. This particular day, we were talking about growing soybeans, and I clearly had a few things wrong. After I finally quit talking, my uncle leans back and smile on his face and says, well, sounds like you thought like Roop. Puzzled, because I didn't understand he was framing up a figurative situation, I looked at him and I said, Roop? Who's Roop? How did he think? Now chuckling, my uncle says, well, Roop thought he had to fart but he really had to poop. <laughs> you know, it's easy sometimes to think that we have all the information, but still draw the wrong conclusion, like Roop. Fast forward 40 years, I still walk fields with farmers, helping them solve problems. For the last three decades, I've led a team of crop advisors helping farmers manage the weather and more recently climate change on over a half a million acres. It's not just hot in the fields anymore. It can be downright volatile and scary. I'm also a concerned father. I was gravely worried about the world my children are set to inherit. I'm blessed to have two adult children in their 20s. Their generation, Gen Z, is one of the most technologically engaged in the history of humanity. With regards to the climate, my generation and the ones before me are leaving them a real mess. Technology of many types is part of our daily existence. But one technology we don't often think about is the technology used to produce our food. Many competing opinions exist on things like food safety, health, organics. There's another factor we should consider, and that is what is the impact of producing our food on the climate? You see, Climate change is real, and the results we are and will experience are dire and scary. For the last 200 or so years, we have systematically pumped thousands of years of stored carbon out of the earth, putting it up into the atmosphere, creating a warming planet that is very close to a tipping point or a point of no return. It's no longer good enough just to talk about reducing emissions. We must somehow remove excess carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and put it back into the ground. How can we do that? Plants and their roots can put that carbon back into the ground. Agriculture, specifically what's called climate smart agriculture, has existing technologies that can be used today on a global scale to meaningfully combat climate change. These technologies, when used as part of a climate smart food production system, can both reduce emissions associated with producing our food while simultaneously removing excess greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. And here's the exciting part. You, the consumer, can incentivize the development of these technologies with your food buying purchases. So how do we create 
a climate smart food production system? Well, it starts with giving farmers the right tools and incentives. There are three areas that we as consumers are being consistently misled. Organics, GMOs, and glyphosate herbicide. If we can reframe the conversation about just these three technologies, we could make significant progress in the next five years in encouraging the development of the very technologies farmers need to reverse climate change. Listen, I'm about to say some things that are gonna run contrary to what you typically hear. I just ask, let's walk together and explore some ways we can encourage the development of these technologies while eating some yummy food. Let's start with organics. Many of you are being told the healthiest and safest food to eat is organically grown food. I'm not opposed to organics. I actually work with both organic and conventional farmers. And while we could debate about the relative benefits from a health standpoint of organic versus conventionally grown food, in the light of the climate crisis, that's like debating about who gets to sit in first class on a plane that's crashing to the ground. Organic has taught us how to work with nature. Unfortunately, mostly to control weeds, organic farming requires a lot of what's called tillage. That's where you turn the soil over, pulling a disc or a plow across the field with a tractor. In general, the yields per acre of organic agriculture are lower than conventional agriculture, which results in more expensive food and requires more land to grow the same amount of food. Enter regenerative agriculture. What is regenerative agriculture? Well, if an organic farm got married to a conventional farm and they had a baby, it would be called a regenerative farm. It uses technology to empower a more natural farming system, and it can be very climate friendly. So why is regenerative agriculture so important? Well, you see, the next two technologies I'm gonna talk about in and of themselves don't necessarily help the environment unless they're used as part of a regenerative system. So what are those technologies? First up, GMOs genetically modified and gene edited crops. You may be saying, whoa, I've heard those are bad for you. That's understandable given the way that GMOs are oftenly, often presented negatively in the mainstream and social media. The facts are that in 51 years of developing and growing genetically modified crops, there have been no significant links to any human health issues. So why do I have GMOs as the second key to saving the planet? Well, it's important that you first understand plants breathe in carbon dioxide, a potent greenhouse gas. There's exciting work being done by groups like the Salk Institute, who are using genetic modification of plants to turn ordinary plants into super carbon dioxide sucking machines. These plants grow deeper roots that take that carbon that they breathe out of the air and they put it deep in the soil where it can be safely stored for long periods of time. That has the effect of embedding that climate benefit in all the downstream food that you and I eat from crops grown. Do you realize that in the United States, if we took just the basic crops of corn, soybeans, wheat, and rice, and we put the trait the Salk Institute is developing in it, it would overnight put over 300 million acres to work, removing excess carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and storing it safely in the ground. That would embed all the climate benefits of that in the downstream food that you and I eat. That pizza and wings that we love, saving the climate never tasted so good. But we're being misled about the safety of that technology. 
that non-GMO label you see in the store, when you buy your food based on that label, it is disincentivizing the development of one of the very technologies that can save the planet. Next technology, glyphosate. Now that's a scary word. Glyphosate's been around for a long time. It was developed in the 1970s. Why do I have glyphosate with GMOs and regenerative agriculture as the final key to saving the planet? Glyphosate can help farmers avoid tillage. Why is that important? Because every time we till the ground to control weeds, it's like pouring gas on a fire, releasing that stored carbon that we've worked so hard to put into the soil back into the atmosphere. When climate smart farmers use glyphosate herbicide at key times during the growing season, instead of tillage to control weeds, they can leave the soil undisturbed year round, keeping that carbon safely stored in the soil. Over time, that soil becomes healthier, more drought tolerant, less likely to erode and run off into our water supply. And get this, that carbon is like a plant food buffet for our crops, enabling us <clears throat> to produce more food on the same land over time as our population grows, so we don't have to put more sensitive lands into production just to feed people. Hopefully, I've given you some new things to think about with regards to your food buying purchases. The next time you're at your favorite grocery store or restaurant, let's put on a fresh set of eyes and ask ourselves, are we being scared or manipulated by labeling? Think differently. When we stop buying food labeled in a way to evoke fear, we're telling our food system we want our farmers to have all the tools and technologies they need to save the planet. Choose facts, not fear. It will change things. Join me. And let's go eat our way to a cleaner planet. Thank you.